Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hanging Out with Miss, Mrs. Hammond. This is a bittersweet day because it's the last chapter of Matilda. Can you believe it? I mean, I can't. And before I begin reading, I want to say if there are any books that you have in mind that you would like to hear, doesn't have to be a novel. It can be whatever you would like. I want to read what you guys want. So if if there's something that you've been wanting to listen to or hear, let me know. Leave comments for me, and I will surely consider that. Maybe Miss Pollen, our wonderful librarian at South Elementary, can also give us some ideas. So I hope so. Anyway, we have one word today that we're going to talk about. And after we read the chapter, I want to just review it with you briefly, and then I will give you all the information so that you may test on it. The first word, or the only word, is solicitors. Solic solicitors are the chief law officer of a city or a town. Okay? Solicitors. Okay. The last chapter is a new home. I can't wait. Later that day, oh, let's think about what happened yesterday. Oh my goodness, I'm just jumping the gun here. Oh, wow. What happened when Miss Trunchbull was trying to teach the class? She was being horrible to that little boy because he didn't know his three times tables. Well, who would know them if she asked, asked them? And Matilda, Matilda, she became so frustrated. She had the chalk right on the chalkboard. And it was writing things about Magnus and Agatha. Agatha was Miss Trunchbull's name. And it was saying, Agatha, give Jenny back her home. This is Magnus. Magnus was Jenny's father. Oh, that was amazing. So now we're ready. A new home. Later that day, the news began to spread that the headmistress had recovered uh, from her fainting fit and had marched out of the school building, tight-lipped and white in the face. The next morning, she did not return to the school. And at lunchtime, Mr. Tribbley, who was the deputy head, telephoned her house to inquire if she was feeling unwell. But there was no answer on the phone. So when the school was over, Mr. Tribbley, he decided to investigate further. So he walked to the house where Miss Trunchbull lives on the edge of the village, the lonely, small, red brick Georgian building known as the Red House. Tucked away in the woods there behind the hills, and, and, and he rang the doorbell. Ding dong. No answer. He knocked loudly. There was no answer. He called out, is anyone at home? No answer. He tried the door, and, and to his surprise, he found that it was unlocked. He went in. He peeked around. The house was silent. I mean, there was no one in it, and yet all the furniture was still in place. Here, oh, also, everything seemed to be normal until he started opening drawers, and he looked at in cupboards, and there was no clothes or underclothes or shoes anywhere. They had all disappeared. She's done a bump, Mr. Tribbley said to himself, and he went away to inform the school governors that the headmistress had apparently vanished. On the second evening, Miss Honey received by restaurant post a letter from a firm of local solicitors informing her that the last will and testament of her late father, Dr. Honey, had suddenly and mysteriously turned up. The document revealed that ever since her father's death, Miss Honey had, in fact, been the rightful owner of a property on the edge of the village known as the Red House, which until recently had been occupied by a Miss Agatha Trunchbull. This will also show that her father's lifetime savings, which fortunately were still safely in the bank, had also been left to her. The solicitor, solicitor's letter added that if Miss Honey would kindly call in the office as soon as possible, and then the property and the money would be transferred into her name very rapidly. 
Miss Honey did just that. And within a couple of weeks, she had moved into the red house and the very place in which she had been brought up and where luckily all the family furniture and pictures were still around. Oh, and from then on, Matilda was a welcome visitor to the red house every single evening after school and a very close friendship began to develop between the teacher and the small child. Back at the school, oh, great changes were also taking place. This is wonderful. And as soon as it became clear that Miss Trunchbull had completely disappeared from the scene, the excellent Mr. Trimbley was appointed head teacher in her place. And very soon after that, Matilda was moved up into the top form where Miss Plimsoll quickly discovered that this amazing child had every bit bright and was every bit as bright as Miss Honey had said that she was. One evening, a few weeks later, Matilda was having tea with Miss Honey in the kitchen of the Red House after school, as they always did, when Matilda said suddenly, Something strange has happened to me, Miss Honey. Tell me about it, Miss Honey said. Well, this morning, Matilda said, just, just for fun, I tried to push something over with my eyes, and I, and I couldn't do it. Nothing moved. I didn't even feel the hotness build up behind my eyeballs, and the power had gone. I think I've lost it completely. Miss Honey carefully buttered a slice of, of uh, brown bread and put a little strawberry jam on it. Well, I've been expecting something like this to happen, she said. You have? Why? Matilda asked. Well, Miss Honey said, it's only a guess, but here's what I'm thinking. While you were in my class, you had nothing to do. You had nothing to do to make you, make you struggle. I mean, you, your fairly enormous brain was going crazy with frustration. And... It was bubbling and boiling away like mad instead of in your head. And, and, and there were tremendous energy bottled up, up there with nowhere to go. And somehow or other, you were able to shoot that energy out through your eyes and make objects move. But now things are different. And, and, and you are in the top form competing against children more than twice your age. And all that mental energy is being, is being used up in class. Your brain is for the first time having to struggle and strive and keep really busy, which is great. And that's only a theory, mind you. And it, and it may be a silly one, but I don't think that it's far off the mark. Well, I'm glad it's happened, Matilda said. I, I wouldn't want to go through life as a miracle worker. You've done enough. Miss Honey said, I can still hardly believe you made all this happen for me. Matilda, who was perched on a tall stool at the kitchen table and her bread and jam, ate her bread and jam slowly. She did so love these afternoons with Miss Honey, and she felt completely comfortable in her presence. And, and the two of them talked to each other more or less as equals. And here's a picture. And they're having tea in the house, which now has furniture. She's living a lovely life now. Did you know, Miss Matilda said suddenly, that the heart of a mouse beats at the rate of 650 times a second? Oh, I did not, Miss Honey said, smiling. How absolutely fascinating. Uh, uh, where did you hear that? Uh, in a book from the library, Matilda said. And, and that means it goes so fast that you can't even hear the separate beats. It must sound just like a buzz. Well, it must, Miss Honey said. And how fast do you think a hedgehog's heart beats, Matilda asked. Well, tell me, Miss Honey said, smiling once again. Well, it's not as fast as a mouse, Matilda said. It's 300 times a minute. But even so, that you wouldn't have thought that it would be it went up as fast as, as in a creature that moves so slowly, would you, Miss Honey? I certainly wouldn't, Miss Honey said. Tell me more. Well, a horse, Matilda said. That's really slow. It's only 40 times a minute. This child, Miss Honey, told herself, seems to be interested in everything. I mean, when one is with her, it is impossible to be bored. I just love it. The two of them stayed sitting and talking to the kitchen in the kitchen for an hour or so longer. And then at about six o'clock, Matilda said goodnight. And she set out to walk home to her parents' house, which was, oh, only about an eight-minute journey away. When she arrived at her own gate, she saw a large black. Black Mercedes motor car parked outside, and she didn't even take too much notice of that. But then there was often strange cars. There's a lot of strange cars parked in her father's place. Hmm. But when she entered the house, she was 
confronted by a scene of utter chaos. Her mother and her father were both in the hall frantically stuffing clothing and various objects into suitcases. Look at them. They were going nuts. They were stuffing everything in suitcases. What on earth is going on? She cried. What's happening, Daddy? We're off, Mr. Wormwood said, not looking up. We're leaving for the airport in half an hour, and you better get yourself packed. Your brother's upstairs all ready to go. Now you get on the move, girl. Get going. Off? Matilda cried out. Where to? Spain, the father said. It's a better climate a be uh, than this old lousy country. Spain? Matilda cried. Oh, I want to go to Spain. I love it here, and I love my school. Just do as you're told and stop arguing, the father snapped. I've got enough troubles without messing about with you. But Daddy, Matilda cried, began. You be quiet, the father shouted. We're leaving in 30 minutes and I am not missing this plane. But for how long, Daddy? How long? Matilda cried. When are we coming back? We aren't, said the father. Now beat it, I am busy. Matilda turned away from him and walked out through the open door. And as soon as she was on that road, she began to run. And, and, and she headed straight back toward Miss Honey's house. And then she reached uh, there in less than four minutes. She flew up the driveway and suddenly she saw Miss Honey in the front garden, standing in the middle of a bed of roses, doing something with a pair of clippers. Miss Honey had heard the sound of Matilda's feet racing. I mean, she was going fast. Like, like. And then Miss Honey... Here's a picture. She was working in the garden and, and she hears Matilda running <gasps> over the gravel. And now she straightened up and turned and she stepped out of the rose bed as the child came running up. <gasps> my, my, she said, what in the world is the matter? Matilda stood before her, panting out of breath. Her small face flushed crimson all over. Oh, they're leaving, she cried. They're all gone mad and they're filling their suitcases and they're Leaving for Spain in about 30 minutes. <laughs> Who is? Miss Honey asked quietly. Mommy and Daddy and my brother Michael. And they said that I have to go with them. You mean for a holiday? Miss Honey asked. Forever. But Tilda cried. Daddy said that we were never coming back. There was a brief silence, and then Miss Honey said, Actually, I'm not surprised. You mean. You know that they were leaving? Matilda cried, why didn't you tell me? Oh, oh no, no, darling, Miss Honey said. I, I, I did not know they were going, but, but the news just still doesn't surprise me. Why? Matilda cried, please tell me why. She was still out of breath from the running and from the shock of it all. Because your father, Miss Honey said, is, he's, in a bunch of, he, uh, he's in a bunch of trouble with some crooks. I mean, everyone in the village knows that, and, and my guess is that he's a receiver of stolen cars from all over the country. He's in it deep. Tilda stared at her open mouth. This honey went on. People, people brought uh, stolen cars to your father's workshop where he changed the numbers and the plates and resprayed the bodies in different colors and all the rest of it, and now somebody's probably tipped them off to the police on. And, and he's doing what they all have to do, run, run off to Spain where they can't get him. We'll have been sending his money out there for years already and waiting for him to arrive. They were standing on the lawn in front of the lovely red brick house with its weathered old red tiles and its tall chimneys. And Miss Honey still had a pair of garden clippers in one hand and it was a warm golden evening and a blackbird was singing somewhere nearby. I don't want to go with them, Matilda suddenly cried. I want to go. I don't want to go with them. Well, I'm afraid you must, Miss Honey said. I want to live with you, Miss Matilda cried out. Please, please let me live with you. Well, I only wish you could, but Miss Honey said, but I'm afraid it's not possible. You cannot leave your parents just because you want to. I mean, they have a right to take care, take you with them. But, 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 but what if they agreed? Matilda cried eagerly. What if they said yes and I could stay with you? Would you let me stay with you in your house if they said yes? And he said softly, well, yes, that would be heaven. Well, I think they might. 
Let me tell the crowd I honestly think they might. They don't actually care anything about me. Oh, not too fast. Not too fast now, honey. We've got uh, we, we, we've got to go fast. Until the crowd, they're leaving any moment. Come on, come on. She shouted, grasping Miss Honey's hand. Please, please come on with me and ask him. Oh, but we'll have to hurry. We'll have to run. And here they are. They're running. She's grabbing Mrs. Honey's hand, Miss Honey's hand, and they're running and running, trying to get to her parents before they leave. The next moment, the two of them were running. They were running down the drive together and then out on the road, and Matilda was ahead, pulling Miss Honey after her. Ah, oh, she was pulling her. And by her wrist, it was a wild and wonderful dash that they made along the country lane. And through the village into the house where Matilda's parents lived, and the big white Mercedes was still outside, and now it's and now it's booed, and all its doors were open, and Mr. and Mrs. Wormwood and the brothers were scurrying around and, and like ants, piling in the suitcases as Matilda and Miss Honey came dashing up. Daddy said, and Mummy, Matilda burst out and gasped with purple breath. I don't want to go with you. I want to stay here. I want to live with Miss Honey, and she says that I can, but but only if you give me permission. Please say yes. Go. Go on, Daddy. Say yes. Say yes, Mummy. The father turned and looked at Miss Honey. You're the teacher woman who, who, who once came here to see me, aren't you? He said. And then he went back to bestowing the suitcases into the car. His wife said to him, Well, this one uh, will have to go in the back seat. There's no more room in the, in, in the boot. I would love to have Matilda with me, Miss Honey said. I, I, I would look after her very well with loving care, Mr. Wormwood. And, and I would pay for everything. She wouldn't cost you a penny. But, but it, it was not my idea. It was Matilda's, and, and, and I will not agree to take her without your full and willing consent. Come on, Harry, the mother said, pushing a suitcase back into the car seat. Why don't we let her go if that's what she wants? It'll be one last to look after. I'm in a hurry, the father said. I've got, I've got a plane I've got to catch. And, and, and if she wants to stay, then, then let her stay. It's fine with me. Here they are trying to pack that car and just running around like they're frantic. They have to get away. Oh. Matilda laughed into Miss Honey's arms. Oh, Miss Honey. And I hugged her and Miss Honey hugged her back. And then the mother and father and brother were inside the car and the car was pulling away with their tires screeching. And the brother gave a wave out through the rear window, but the other two didn't even look back. Miss Honey was still hugging that tiny little girl in her arms, and neither of them said a word as I stood there watching that big black car tearing around the corner Rawr! at the end of the road and disappearing. And that's the end of Matilda. She is going to live with Miss Honey. And they're going to live happily ever after. What an awesome ending to a wonderful, wonderful book. This is one of my favorite books. And I hope it will become one of yours. Matilda by Ruel Dahl, illustrated by Quentin Blake. Before I give you your information on testing, let's just briefly sort of go through and and make sure that that we remember the things that I think are important. Matilda Wormwood, that was her name, and she was this extraordinarily little brilliant girl, wasn't she? And she had parents that Mr. and Mrs. Wormwood, they, they weren't very good. And she also lived with her brother. And her brother's name was, do you remember? Michael. Michael Wormwood. And they were all quite different from Matilda. And they did not understand her. And they treated her badly. They really did. Well, Matilda placed tricks on her family, remember? Uh, to get them back and the way she replaced her father's hair tonic with that platinum hair dye of her mother's and turned his hair blonde. That's one of my favorite things. And then she used that parrot convincing that uh, them that her house was haunted. Remember that one? And this 
gave Matilda a really good feeling for the way that she was treated. Now, Matilda starts school late for a little girl, doesn't she? And also, she's glued that hat. She glued that hat on his head. Can you think of anything else? And then she started late because her parents did not even register her for school. And her teacher's name, and we know, is Miss Honey. And that's where she learned about Miss Honey. And then she had this terrible woman named Miss Trunchbull who was in charge of the school, didn't she? And she placed these kids when they were, they weren't acting disrespectful, but, you know, they, in this choky, that choky was this little, little closet thing that had nails sticking out in glass. And it was called the choky, C-H-O-K-E-Y, choky. Now, Miss Trunchbull uh, would not move her into a, a higher grade or higher form. And as Miss um, Honey had asked to do, because she knew that she was so brilliant, that uh, she did need a friend. And her first friend's name was Lavender. Lavender, that's correct. And uh, there was this boy. And this was a really big thing when this boy, that boy that had that chocolate cake, he had eaten some of Mrs. Miss Trunchbull's chocolate cake. What was his name? Do you remember Bruce Bogtrotter. Bruce Bogtrotter had to eat that big, huge, enormous chocolate cake. And that was really something. And um, then Lavender uh, tries to get revenge. And what did Lavender do? She's the one that put that nut into the drinking glass when Miss Trunchbull came in. Oh, my goodness. That was something that was so funny. Um, let's see. Uh, she remembered there was a little girl called Hortensia, Hortensia, and Hortensia was that taller girl that she was older and she was trying to tell them all about the trunch pool and everything. Um, and then uh, Miss Honey, she comes, she tries to do what? Matilda is just about sick of everything. And she develops these magical powers in, through her eyes. And she could make things move. What happened that she really got the trunch full with? That chalk. That chalk. And she found out what Miss Honey's uh, father's name was, which was Magnus. And what was Miss Trunchbull's name? Agatha. And Miss Honey's name was Jenny. And she knew that miss trunchbull had stolen that house from from uh, miss honey and so she scared the daylights out of miss trunchbull and that woman left town and in the end they were just happy as all get outs oh my goodness now so in the end miss trunchbull got to move back in didn't she and she got to uh uh live in her house and she had all of her nice things that she had always wanted can you believe all the vocabulary that we've had in this i had it all fixed on a poster board and i've left it in my bedroom uh i hate to leave you hanging so i'm not going to go get that but i just wanted to show you the i mean two sides of this huge poster board filled up hanging down and hanging over my mr hammond was like wow is that all i said yes i said it's one reason why i love this book so much is because the poster board i mean the poster board the the vocabulary the vocabulary is awesome in this book and we've learned lots of words so this let me go get it can you just hold on one second i promise you i'll be right back i will promise you i'm going to show you i just have to show you this and i'm sorry to, uh, wait Okay, I'm coming. Look, I made this, and I put all the vocabulary on there because I just wanted you to see last night all of this wonderful vocabulary. Hey, but it's not just this side. It's on both sides. We have gone through the vocabulary, haven't we? Remember what a basin was? A sink? Oh, my goodness. And 
precocious, clever and mature for your age. Who is precocious? Matilda. Oh, so many awesome words. The setting, the setting was in Buckinghamshire, England. Remember, oh my goodness, and all of these wonderful, wonderful vocabulary words. I hope that all of you guys earn your six points. That will make me happy. And uh, there's questions that you can go online and look at and review if we haven't reviewed enough. But remember, fabulous book. Fabulous book with fabulous vocabulary. I'm going to give you your information that you've been waiting on. And Miss Pollen has it written right here. The reading level of this book is 5.7. And the number of it is. Five, four, two, nine. The number to test on Matilda. I had the wrong five. Five, four, two, nine. And I'll hold this up right there. Okay. Five point seven reading level. Five, four, two, nine. That is your test number. Oh, my goodness. Thank you guys so much. Please leave comments on other books that you would like to hear being read. We can, I'll read whatever you guys would like for me to. Uh, so until next time, thank you so much. Oh, it's, oh, we're done with this. Let me know how well you do on the test. Bye.